Why have brass knuckles been declared illegal in many countries around the world and what makes them more dangerous than regular knives? In this video, I'll share the history of brass knuckles and how they earn such a fearsome reputation. Intrigued? Give it a thumbs up and watch the video till the end. Brass knuckles have this oddly funky connection with the bad guys in our heads, probably because we've seen these bad boys mostly in the clutches of movie villains. But let's take a groovy trip down the history lane of this totally straightforward weapon and find out that it was like totally in vogue all through the 20th century. Picture this, brass knuckles are like the ultimate high five turned into a weapon. Made from solid stuff, sliding onto your fingers or fist bumping between them with a smooth or spiked smackdown surface. Even though they're like the simplest design ever, these knucks are like a real wild card, packing a punch that can totally mess you up, ranging from a minor hit to game over. Guess what? The very first shoutouts of these metallic marvels as gladiators gear date back to the far out 2nd century AD. Those cool cat Roman historians left behind descriptions of a bronze fist, a gnarly bronze plate with finger holes gripped by fighters. At first, they thought it was all about the cestus, like a snazzy strap jazzed up with bronze patches that ancient boxers used to jazz up their fists. Can you dig it? But in 1923, when they were digging up a circus spot in Lyon, guess what? They stumbled upon a pair of bronze knuckles that were like a total match with those ancient descriptions. There's no gossip or archaeological scoop about knuckles in the Middle Ages, and it seems like these bad boys were left hanging in the memory closet for like a whopping one and a half millennia. As weapons, they got traded in for a bunch of fancy metal gloves and battle mitts. Fast forward to the next knuckleheads who remembered these knucks, the 15th and 16th century Venetian sailors. When it was all hands on deck in those cramped ship cabins, they had to go all in on the F, which is like an old school term for smacks. So those Venetian sailors souped up their cat claws with spikes to give them a bit more zing. Around the same time, it's like a total knuckle revolution was happening in places like India, Japan and China. They had all sorts of cool stuff like Chinese combat rings, combat combs and most likely right around that time, the foundation for the knuckles we know today was laid down. Radical, right? And now, let's dive into the nitty gritty of how brass knuckles are whipped up and how they do their cool thing. Brass knuckles usually come to life through factory lines, DIY spirit or some crafty handiwork using metal, tough plastic, bone or other gnarly solid materials. Later on, they even started punching finger holes into those plates. Classic brass knuckles have a rad design with spikes or without, a grip and a foothold for that grip. And check this out, the footholds like that bit that rests against your palm, so when you throw a punch, the kinetic energy is all like, catch me if you can, in your hand and not in your fingers. Otherwise, you'll be breaking not only your opponent's jaw, but also your own hand. Oh, by the way, the 90s were like a golden era for homemade and crafty brass knuckles. Quality? Well, let's just say it was a work in progress. Bandits and their shenanigans were totally digging these weapons for their compactness and combat prowess. But you know what? They weren't exactly thrilled when those hits caused some damage to their own precious fingers. Why? Because sometimes the grip foothold wasn't really the right size. Now here's the head scratcher. Brass knuckles weighed around 300 to 400 grams on average. But how come they're capable of dishing out way more damage than those extra 300 grams suggest? The secret source is in the surface area of the metal, dude! Imagine you give a wooden log a tap with a stick. That stick's just gonna bounce off and the log won't feel a thing. But if you make a metal object and give that log a wallop, chances are you'll leave some serious dents. Same deal with a punch. When you throw a punch, most of the energy cushions out against skin and bones preventing you from tearing someone else's skin apart. The density of the target and what you're hitting with is the same, but with a metal knuckle, slicing through someone's skin is like a piece of cake. And if you hit a bone with metal, that bone's breaking like a twig. Yet, when bones collide, it's not a guarantee they'll snap. Groovy, isn't it? 
All right, gather round, it's time to uncover the rad variety of brass knuckles we've got rolling in modern times. First off, let's groove with the classic flavors, the ones with spikes and the smooth ones. These knucks are like a match made in heaven for those shady characters. Imagine this, you can keep these gnarly knuckles chilling in your pocket, and when the moment calls for it, you casually slip your hand into your pocket and bam, you pull out a fully loaded fist. Just remember though, these knucks are in the cool club of cold weapons. When it comes to cold weapons, by the legal jazz, we're talking sabers, cutlasses, knives, daggers, finished blades, dirks, brass knuckles, stilettos, and other tools specifically designed or adapted to give something of a good old poke. And you know what's the deal? Carrying cold weapons around in Russia is a no-no. Here's a fun fact, back in World War I, German soldiers were rocking what they called trench knives. These were basically regular knives, but they had a brass knuckle handle. Why? Well, that was so they could throw down in tight spots, throw some stabby cutty moves, and still dish out a good old punch. It's like they were ready to dance in close quarters, man. But one thing you definitely can't expect is a brass knuckle disguised as an iPhone case. And at first glance, the developers of such a case might have had some righteous intentions. Imagine this, you're strolling down a dark alley, suddenly you whip out your totally combat-ready iPhone case. However, these cases have super slim sides, and even if you manage to use it as a weapon, your iPhone probably won't make it out in one piece. The force of impact will be like, hey, iPhone, catch! But hold on tight, because someone took it even further. In 1981, a dude named John M. Greenleaf from New York came up with a four-shot self-defense contraption that was like a shooting knuckle duster. Picture this, it was this flat rectangular device the size of a cigarette case, but it had four barrels lined up. It loaded up with signal flares that, when you hit the side lever, shot off one by one. Don't be fooled by the seemingly harmless attacker's weapon. From up close, these tiny signal flares were dealing some seriously lethal damage. It's like fireworks, but with a seriously wrong twist. And now, let's break down the pros and cons of rocking a brass knuckle in real life. On the sunny side, you can totally stash it in your jacket or pants pocket, easy peasy. Plus, the beauty of using a brass knuckle is that it's all intuitive, man. No fancy training required, just go with the flow of your punches, and hey, Making one is like a budget-friendly DIY project. You can whip it up from whatever's lying around. But of course, let's not forget the shadows lurking. Swing too hard and you might end up giving your own hand a serious ouch moment. Each heavy-hitting knuckle smack can be a pain party, even for you, cause metal's all like, hey hand, let's get up close and personal. And when it comes to range, this is like the closest you can get, dude. A brass knuckle's only a couple of inches longer than your hand. Meanwhile, a regular Joe with a knife or a stick in hand would have the upper hand in a brawl, cause they could dish out hits from a bit of a distance. So you know, it's a matter of short reach, but big impact. Alright, let's take a wild ride through the movies where we've stumbled upon this gnarly weapon. For starters, check out Legend. In that flick, you get a primo view of how barroom brawls were like in the gangster days. The main characters all suave with his slick bad guy talk, and then boom, the brawl kicks off. If you zoom in, you'll spot those very brass knuckles in the hands of the gangsters. And man, did they slip those things on quick and sneaky. Or how about Kickboxer from 89? It serves up a serious unique take on brass knuckles. In their final showdown, Jean-Claude Van Damme and his rival wrapped their hands in cloth, then they dunked their fists in resin and dipped them in a bowl of crushed glass. I mean, you can guess the kind of mayhem that this homemade knuckle duster can unleash on both opponents and the wielder. But you gotta hand it to the movie scriptwriters, that's a pretty darn intriguing idea. It's like the wildest DIY brass knuckles ever.